Alright, let's not mince words. You wish to learn about Magic Archer. Obviously, because you clicked the video. Unless you just like hearing my voice, in which case... Are you doing anything later? You look great, by the way. In a game featuring the tried and true holy trinity of sword fighters, rogues, and casters, a vocation like Magic Archer truly stands out. There's almost no real blueprint for a role like this, and so you might be left thinking, Thiefy, what the hell is a Magic Archer? And honestly, even after preparing this guide, I'm... I'm not really sure how to answer that question. <laughs> to say Magic Archer is what it says on the tin doesn't really paint a proper picture of the vocation itself. We're going to have to dig deeper if we want to learn the true nature of this oddball class. So grab your shovels and buckle up, because we're about to soil ourselves. This wasn't a good analogy. This is tough work, but somebody's got to do it. Take the spice and majesty of Sorcerer, then mash it together with the sheer efficiency of the Ranger, and you have Magic Archer. Kind of, but not really, but also maybe. This vocation is incredibly interesting, it's such a unique blend of playstyles that come together to form its own beast and can certainly take some adjusting to. But after some dedication, you'll soon find that... Yeah, it works. What you're left with is one of the most imaginative roles, not just in Dragon's Dogma, but across many video games. I see this vocation as less of an archer and more of an extremely unique caster. Basically, any of the yellow vocations are a better choice for actual archery, but this one is just so weirdly unique in a way I find difficult to put into words. But this is literally a vocation guide, so that's kind of my job here. Your standard projectiles fire at a slower pace than regular arrows, but are capable of locking on to targets, seeking them out with some level of persistence. However, due to their slow travel speed, they can still be avoided by a particularly fast enemy. Note that you don't need to lock on in order to fire, and you can just sort of free ball arrows if need be. Think of this as being sort of like firing missiles in Ace Combat. If you haven't played Ace Combat, go do that. The plot is basically fight a pilot anime, and if that sounds badass, it's because it is. Also, the music is really good. Now while the magic bow is definitely the main event of the vocation, it does possess some unique skills for daggers. Once again, I won't be going over any skills I've already covered and Magic Archer shares several dagger skills with Strider, so if you want to know about those, be sure to check that one out too. And while this may seem like me trying to push my other videos, I'm actually just lazy, which is arguably worse. Don't forget, as a yellow class you have access to dodge roll and double jump which provide fantastic evasive mobility. Now let's get into some skills. So for the daggers, we have Sun Flare to start with. Using this skill allows you to leap high into the air before diving down to create a pillar of flame where you land. You can use it to extend your regular jumps a bit, especially if you combo with instant reset covered in the strider guide. The trouble here is the actual area of said pillar of flame is pretty small, chief. Ooh. That's kind of small. Yikes. This makes it potentially dangerous to use around groups. A direct hit will launch lighter enemies, and worth noting it apparently has a decent stagger rate, but frankly, the damage isn't really anything special. I wouldn't personally recommend this one. Grand Sension, as you charge up for about 3 seconds before releasing a holy wave of light that sweeps forward ahead of you in a 1.5 meter radius and travels for 3.5 seconds, potentially striking multiple enemies or large monsters several times especially a downed cyclops or a dragon. Though it can be blocked, it will eventually pass through a blocking enemy to strike them from behind instead, and interestingly, the pose you adopt when charging up has you lean so low to the ground that certain attacks can actually sweep right over you, providing some level of evasive utility if you're feeling spicy. And of course, with this being a holy skill, successful strikes can heal the user, and will deal extra damage to undead. I wouldn't call this a bad choice at all, worth keeping on the table. Shadow Shackle creates a shigel
Fuck. Shadow Shackle creates a sigil with a 2 meter radius that traps multiple small enemies, and even potentially larger ones, lasting for 30 seconds. Because of the fact that, unlike Mystic Knight's Vortex Sigil, this actually functions effectively, it goes without saying that this is fantastic for crowd control, especially when bottlenecking or otherwise drawing in enemies, allowing for large groups to be easily dispatched with skills like Cutting Wind. You can actually set up two of these sigils, so definitely something to keep in mind if large groups are a concern. Magic Rebalancer has you laid down a sigil that provides a buff to yourself and all allies who enter that boosts both the magic stat and magic defenses. The sigil lasts for 20 seconds and the buff it applies lasts for 90 seconds. Because each individual cast applies the buff again, you can stack this up to 4 times, which is a very significant boost to both damage and defense. I'm about to let you in on a little secret. You can just use demons and mages periouts to achieve the same result. Granted, those last for 60 seconds rather than 90, and rebalancer buffs the entire party, so it still has merit. Being able to just drop this without needing items is big, and the sheer amount of damage you end up doing as a result is even bigger. Immolation is a goofy skill for goofy fellas, and as such, I respect it. Following a brief incantation, you proceed to set yourself on fire like some fucking lunatic, enshrouding you in flames for 60 seconds and dealing you 10 points of damage per second. Any hardcore math nerds watching will know that results in a total of 600 points of damage, which isn't a particularly large concern once you've got anywhere around 1000 HP, but it can become more of a concern when you also have a bunch of enemies flying at you. That said, if you specifically chose to take this skill without packing curatives of any sort, pray that your god of choice may help you, because I don't think I can at this point. The aura of flame this skill surrounds you with perhaps surprisingly, deals blunt physical damage to enemies it makes contact with, which has a high chance to set them aflame. If things get too spicy, you can activate the skill again to extinguish the fire. Given the nature of this skill, it tends to be best used when climbing large enemies or just balls out diving into groups of smaller ones. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, this skill is fucking hilarious! It's also, um... Shockingly effective. Just the raw skill alone is capable of dealing some bonkers damage, but because Immolation deals physical damage, it actually works with Conqueror as periapts, at which point it dishes out heaps of damage, making it potentially rival some of the best skills in the game, which is just the funniest shit in the world to me. Like, you don't even have to swing a weapon. It's fucked up. Now onto Magic Archer's primary focus, the Magic Bow itself. To kick off its skills, we have Sixfold Bolt. As the name implies, this skill is cut from the same cloth as Fivefold and Tenfold Flurry, firing a number of magical bolts that close in on an enemy over a moderate distance. These bolts permanently deal ice damage and as a result can potentially freeze enemies, which is a considerably handy bonus. This skill is effectively your bread and butter. It's versatile and useful in a variety of situations, just a solid bet for dependable damage. Just watch out for for enemies resistant to ice. Hunter Bolt serves as your given crowd control skill. Tagging anything within a wide sigil, it targets up to 10 enemies before firing in an upward volley to rain down upon them. Despite appearances, this skill is actually unaffected by ceilings, so you're free to use it indoors or in caves. It can also be useful when fighting larger enemies, as it targets their individual parts and can do so several times. Hunter Bolt is pretty good at staggering things too, so consider it an option for that and the aforementioned crowd control. Hey, what the fuck, man? Magical Gleam fires a Seeking Holy Bolt that can be held and then released to manually discharge it, at which point it explodes to illuminate a wide area. This lasts for 60 seconds and... Wait. There's no way. Is this fucking Radiance? As a skill? Guys, I can't see without magical glee! <laughs> Get better eyes, dingus! The skill deals holy damage on a direct hit to an undead target, but does almost no damage to living enemies. Which is to say, most of them. Kinda getting the feeling this one might be, mmm, hot garbage. I'd say give this one a miss, it's not worth your time. Ricochet Hunter is another crowd control skill which deals lightning based damage, firing magical bolts that ricochet off nearby surfaces, hence the name. As you might expect, this makes it especially useful in close quarters and enclosed areas, but it's also potentially useful for catching pesky harpies and the like, due to their tendency to target nearby foes after striking something. With noting, the damage of these bolts increases after roughly 5 ricochets, going between 3 stages. Because of this, it can actually be beneficial to aim at a nearby surface rather than your given target, since the initial ricochet will give it an extra kick. Overall, this is a pretty solid skill that doesn't hurt to bring along. Vortex Trail is... 
Oh, remember earlier when I mentioned Vortex Sigil from the Mystic Knight Guide? That insanely weak, borderline useless skill? This is that, except it actually works! And what do you know? Again, that means it's actually really good for crowd control. Goddamn, how much crowd control does Magic Archer need? So yeah, this one's really sick actually. You fire a shot into an enemy which creates a magical vortex that draws in all surrounding enemies with a hefty bit of force. The pull is so strong that it can even shift golems around, and you can do some really cheeky shit like yank enemies off cliffs or draw smaller enemies into the attacks of larger ones. This one's good to combo with skills like Grand Sension and Explosive Rivet which we'll cover next. This skill allows you to fire a packet of three enchanted bolts that lodge into an enemy, effectively tagging the target with them. If you've ever played a shooting game where you slap C4 on someone's ass, that's basically the same scenario here, except the detonator is you. By following up with specifically a physical attack, typically from your daggers, you then trigger the bolt to explode, likely launching smaller enemies, knocking down larger ones, and dealing heavy fire damage while potentially setting targets aflame. You can have up to four of these packets active at a time, which when used at once results in... Heads up, you don't need to plant these bolts into enemies, you can pin them anywhere you like in the terrain, which allows you to get really crafty if you want to set traps and so on. Fun and decently effective skill, fairly good option to have. Great Bracer Arrow is a party-wide buff that increases stagger and knockdown resistance to 100% for 3 minutes. That's a lot of time. 180 seconds to be exact. That makes this skill pretty fucking good. Because as we know, 100% is all of the percent, meaning you should be basically untouchable when it comes to shockwaves, roars, and anything designed specifically to knock you flat on your ass. Don't fucking sue me if that's not the case. Great Ward Arrow is another party-wide buff. This one's definitely worth considering since it grants the status effect Impervious, which not only prevents all debilitations for a little over two minutes, it also cures them. And again, we both know, you still didn't bring that secret softener along. Finally, Great Sacrifice is an incredibly brutal skill. After a lengthy incantation, you sacrifice one of your pawns, returning them to the rift as their life force is imbued into a powerful bolt of darkness. Once the skill is charged, time slows to a crawl until the bolt is released, and then... Okay, so this does fucking stupid damage. It comes in two stages, the first coming from the bolt itself, which, after striking its target, proceeds to unleash a bla- the 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 proceeds to unleash a blast with a radius of 3 meters. The bolt itself deals dark damage, but the blast is actually raw magical damage with no enchantment, and makes up the majority of the damage dealt, capable of absolutely wiping the floor with entire health bars, and even one-shotting big bastards outright. On which note, keep in mind it's quite possible to land sneak attacks with this skill, which will actually double the incoming damage. Did I ever mention this? Oh shit, I didn't. Alright, well, quick side note, sneak attacks exist in this game and are more often than not achieved from a long range since it's common for enemies to spot you once you get up close. Landing one results in double damage applied to whatever attack or skill was used. Anyway, Great Sacrifice is a very big deal when it comes to raw power, but because it sacrifices a pawn, you likely want to utilize this to finish off tough enemies if possible. Basically, any situation where you know it's going to end the fight. Or just like, if your pawn won't shut the fuck up, that's also valid. By the way, Magic Archer also has a single unique staff skill called High Perdition that creates a field that can curse enemies who linger within it. And I don't care. You know how else you can curse an enemy by throwing a skull at them? You're welcome. Santa's come late, and he's brought a sack full of augments, so let's go. I'd recommend Resilience, which halves fall damage, Resistance, which greatly increases your resistance to various debilitations, and Regeneration, which restores one health per three seconds, and on its own is sort of whatever, but can be used in tandem with other augments like Sanctuary and Regenerative Equipment to make yourself borderline fucking immortal. Now that we've taken a proper look at Magic Archer, it doesn't feel like quite so much of an enigma to me. The vocation plays sort of like a much more magically focused strider with an emphasis on controlling the battlefield. 
capable of both crowd control and absolutely nuking tough enemies from a comfortable distance. Up close, the good old daggers are always capable of tearing through threats that get too close, and you just about always have the ability to play to elemental weaknesses. Perhaps the most interesting aspect of Magic Archer is its focus on creative skills, with stuff like Vortex Trail and Explosive Rivet letting you experiment with different ways to take down foes, setting traps, or using the environment to your advantage. Combined with several genuinely useful buffs and the like, Magic Archer is capable of providing both damage and support in almost any situation. Now, we might have wrapped this one up, but we're not done quite yet. Stay tuned folks, because up next is Assassin. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe, drop a like, and let me know your thoughts in the comments. You can join my Discord for updates and to hang out with the lovely members of the Thieves Guild. I can also be followed on Twitter, and if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so on Patreon, or simply donate directly via PayPal. Links can be found in the description below. Have a great day, I'll catch you next time.